Hey there family, it's your girl Angie B, your host here at the Hottest Home Hotspot video show. And I know you hear the smile on my face. I, I, I know you do. Because today, I have a very, very special guest on the show. All the way from the United Kingdom. Christian recording artist, music producer, and founder of Stone Built Productions. If you've been listening to the Hottest Home Hotspot, worldwide radio show you know that his music has been in rotation for quite some time and if you've been watching the video show I know you've seen it the video that pretty much inspired our whole love of the United Kingdom and so today family I have parts of a one hour interview for you an interview with the man with vision okay. and, um, God. merciful God was the first song I wrote as a safe Christian <laughs> that was the first song I wrote as a safe Christian <laughs> and, uh, what happened was after I got saved I wanted to share some of the experiences I, I had gone through because my, the process through which I became saved was actually quite a dramatic one. Really? Uh, I was having a lot of, you know, demonic attacks, spiritual attacks. So basically, God allowed me to experience the darkness in the spiritual realm. Just like and the video. Just like the video. So that song is actually based on my real life experiences. Oh, my God. Because I tell you, I, I saw the video. I saw the video before I heard the release. And I was like, okay. oh, my God, I got to figure out where. In fact, I think for a while we just took the audio from the video and played it in the show because I couldn't find, I, I couldn't, and the video would be like, okay, everybody don't need to know this. This is between me and you and your wife. But the video would be like, man, homeboy was having a hard day. He came free. He walking around. God, I mean, it just spoke to me. It was like issues. And then when I lost touch with you, I would go back and just play it, be like, where's Vision? Oh, Lord, I need to go to UK and I need to find Vision. But it, it was very, very real. And so now you're telling me that it's really based on something on, on something that you got that you went through. So, okay, let me just interrupt you. Go ahead and tell me. Tell me some more about the video. Yeah. So, um, that's, that's cool. It's cool. I'm enjoying this. Um, so the I, I actually I, I wrote that video treatment uh, initially when I approached uh, the director. Um, he had some ideas, but it didn't tell the story, you know, as accurately as I could tell it, being the songwriter. So in the end, I just wrote the treatment myself, and that that was what I came up with. But he took uh. the shots. You know, he did the film. Life's bound to be tough, but the answers in the Holy Scriptures are more than enough. The problem with us, we worship ourselves and seek an achievement. Is it God or money that we believe in? He's the reason that we breathe in. He controls the seasons, so I know his word is never deceiving. And he knows I left the life of sin, and considering how tough life has been, it was all of my expense. But you gave me a chance to repent. That's why on this track, it ain't myself, but your name that I defend. Cause you brought light into my darkness. Now when I pray, it's like a communication between partners. Oh God, Will 
God for me to live in fear And even though my battle with the devil was severe There ain't no situation that God can't repair But he let me face it Cause my perception of Satan was basic This was more than hatred He wanted to have me wasted It started in my sleep As I suffocated In the presence of demons Could've moved my strength faded So I did the only thing I knew Called on the name of Jesus And the demons withdrew So now I know it's true What it says in Ephesians 6 We battle not against flesh But spiritual hosts of wickedness Nevertheless You the truth The way and the life From the devil I never went and hot, never weak in mind, cause I know he started a great work with this and he will bring it to the finish. Oh God, See, I've been in your shoes, trying to do my own thing, ignoring his rules. Wanted to prove to the world what I was worth. Put myself first, then I knew I had game, but still couldn't make it work. Now some have to change. I either let this rap game go or change what I use this rap thing for. So I had to look to my creator. He gave me this gift, but could it be for something greater than entertaining? Cause I remember Paul saying, the gift in a man is for the benefit of others. Elevating brothers in the way of a godly man. I chose this way of life so I could be part of a godly plan. So when I write, I testify. Spreading the word about the love of the Messiah See, it's God's desire For you to live a prosperous life But first you must have a prosperous soul And be made whole oh, I actually sat down to, to write Christian music was it's very interesting. Um, I knew I had a lot to say. I knew I, I all I had to do was apply the same lyricism, but it needed to come from genuine experience. Right. right and at right. the same time, it needed to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. Right. So right. I remember just for the first time having to pray before a song, <laughs> you know, Wow. It happens to, happen to study scriptures wow. that would enable me to bring out what I was trying to say. Because, you know, whatever we've been, everything we've been through, you can find it in the Bible. Yes, everything that's for been, sure. Everything we've been through in life, you, you can somehow find it articulated in the Bible. That's correct. Um, so I remember just trying to pick my scriptures and trying to study them and just trying to see how I can incorporate uh, scriptural truth with my artistic expressions. So uh, in the end, when I finished the song, I thought oh, this, is, this is the first gospel song I've ever read. And I remember when I called my sister to come listen to it, she could not believe it, because she, she was saved before I was. And she was just blown away. And that, that encouraged me, because initially I wasn't sure how people were going to react to it. Good, good, good. She good. Away, but she loved it. And I wrote three, uh, two songs say like in within the space of a couple of weeks or whatever and my wife heard one of it which is called never too late and she just started crying Aww. she just started crying and I'm, that was when i kind of knew that wow you know this is something that <laughs> i think i, I think I, if i can get if i can keep getting this reaction then i know that right. you know me right. and god we're, we're doing all right <laughs> Right, 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 right. So that's that's another special song for that reason. Please tell me about the sweet little chicky poo that's singing the hook on <laughs> Oh Merciful God. Where where'd you find uh, where'd you find her? 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 Where'd
I'm gonna look at that. Yeah, that's my wife. Really gonna cry. No wonder I like it. That's her. That's, uh, oh. that's my wife. Now let me let me just tell you a little bit about, about my wife. Her name is Lucille, and um, she is currently a playwright. As a matter of fact, she just did her second play um, called "Has Anyone Seen My Marriage?" The first one she did before that was um, "When Nobody's Looking." She okay. was formerly an actress. Oh, so okay. she's formerly an actress, and after she got saved. All of a sudden, she couldn't, you know, tolerate the kind of yeah. odds that yeah. her agent was kind of put in her way because right, right. now her principles are different, her morals are different. Yeah. So in the end, God kind of led her to take control of her talent and actually oh. create the scripts herself rather than be subject to what somebody else had written um, that didn't, you know, adhere to to the lowest standards. So she she writes plays. So at the time I met her. Um, like I said, neither one of us was saved. I got saved, she got saved, and, and I still wanted to do do this music thing. So I knew she could sing because she'd always right. sing around me and stuff. She uh -huh. she would sing it as such. Um, she recorded for stuff for people before as as a favor, but never pursued singing. So I said, you know what, I, I want you to get on the hook. She, uh -huh. We'll give it a try. So we went in there and just started recording, and it just uh -huh. turned out beautiful. It turned out beautifully. And, you know, when, when I watched the video today, it's like she's the star of the video. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I saw a video and um, people would say, oh, that singer's got to be, and I said, that's my wife. Really? You know? Yeah, <laughs> and she's actually, she, in total, she's on, I think, six songs in my album. Really? So, oh, that's so cute. It's a family event. Baby girl, baby girl, I never even imagined we'd make it this far. Make it this far. But we've come too far to turn back now. And right now, I don't even know what the future holds. But whatever we go through, I just want you to hold my hand real tight and walk with me every step of the way. I did notice the sparkle in her eyes when they came by and said hi, but hardly realized she was ordained mine. Instead, I barely conversed with her when her friend introduced her. Not knowing I was staring at the wife of my future. This was back in 04 when I used to work as a bouncer at a bar, which was the place of our encounter. Just around the corner was where her friend worked, who I met before while I was working on the door. Not much of a rapport, but we talked, and each time was worth it. Cause God's plan in store was perfect. So at the moment, he chose to birth it This down to earth chick came by with her friend Knowing where I would have been And she said I'd like to introduce ya Meet my girl Lucille trying to set me up to pursue her She seemed like a lovely person And even though I was single I wasn't searching So chasing her just wasn't urgent I spoke a few words after I said hello But not knowing what the moment was worth I let her go But God's plan couldn't fail She walked away but his grace didn't Cause a week later her friend came this back in the digits This love of mine down on me and he said that no man should be alone this love of mine but I got ahead and even a bigger plan to redeem our lost souls and raise up a righteous homes let me continue my story Referring to a time when I hadn't seen the Lord's glory I attended church religiously But it was phony Cause the way I lived God should have disowned me In response to a text message I sent That's when she phoned me Conversation was fluent This time we spoke boldly It was an instant click Between me and this chick And by the second call It was like she'd always known me Find myself laughing at every joke she told me Amazed by the character she showed me On our first date She felt safe enough to hold me By the third day I have made them a one and only Lady I call and spend time with it Celebrate Valentine's with But couldn't be my wife cause it wasn't aligned with My plan to marry a girl from my motherland So my cultural ways and values she would understand But she was a Guyanese chick An unlikely wife for a Nigerian guy like me to pick Plus I was against her not going to church I knew what the fear of God was worth So I said it wouldn't work This love of mine I gotta tell you about this love of mine and he said, he said that no man should be should alone. be this alone. Time of hey. But I got ahead and even a bigger plan. So beautiful.
I thought I had the upper hand playing Mr. Lover Man That wouldn't commit But her going to another man I couldn't permit She couldn't understand why I denied my feelings And pulled away but came back just like a rubber band But on the other hand she figured I must have loved her Cause I wasn't looking for sex under the bed covers We weren't saved so our ways were sinful of course But I never let the foreplay lead to intercourse The confusion left the heart hurting Some of her friends tried to tell her wake up It's not working this guy's 26 years old and still a virgin Open your eyes, leave him alone and keep searching Better be wise and move on Cause when he finds his Nigerian virgin bride He'll leave you on your own Considering how close we had grown She hoped I'd change my tone But denying love was my comfort zone She judged me by the example I'd shown She said a real Christian wouldn't go to church then Go to clubs and be flirting And listen to raps with cursing That's when I knew for certain For her to know God, I had to be a better this person love This love of mine I went through the darkness Where the attack of the devil causes more than a scarred flesh Regardless of who deserves it or doesn't Demons are heartless and fearful of nothing among the godless Torments at night make sleeping the hardest Demons try to possess me and control my spirit like a harness But the victory was the fathers Who put the name of the son in my mouth So when I called it, the demons were harmless God's message was clear Leaning Jesus like an armrest And I'll pull you out this mess like a crop in a harvest Questions filled my mind Why should I go through this? And if this is Witchcraft to somebody I know do this I was scared and insecure But he reassured me when I read that verse in Isaiah 54 Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake I realized the only step left to take Was confess all of my sins and make peace with him Not just believing in him but daily seeking him Understanding my reasoning was hard for Lucille When I expressed this feeling within and spoke of the ordeal I said I've been saved by the Redeemer She thought I made it all up just to call off my seeing her I told her I was through with living in lust She cried thinking of what we had, I was giving it up I promised that if she held my hand and walked through this with me From a broken heart she'd truly be free Thinking I could save her, but soon realized like it says in John 6, 65 Only the Creator can grant it to a person to come to Christ Took her to church twice, but to go again and cause strife She wasn't ready to sacrifice the life she knew since her youth And when I pushed, she'd fight the truth and refuse to see the light of Christ. As for me, I wanted to grow to higher heights, and being with her would mean flirting with temptation. So I suggested a separation, agreed to talk on the phone, but wouldn't visit her home while I prayed for her to receive salvation. Cause I knew I had to put the Lord first, like it says in Mark 10, the 29th verse, quoting what the scripture told. Whoever leads behind something dear, a sister or brother to follow the Lord, shall receive it a hundredfold. I learned a great lesson, since I gave her up for him, he gave her back to me as a blessing One night she was home alone in misery Questioning God and trying to understand his mystery If what he did for me was real she had to find out So she cried out, Lord show me your sign now And that hour, God spoke to us individually Though apart we connected spiritually The sign she prayed for was shown When God had me send a text containing scripture to her phone that's when the seed of faith was sown She read that text and the word of God embraced her soul This trial made us fight an opponents But to my delight that night when she called It was a real special moment The peace of God was introduced From then on we started to get along And she no longer refused to come to church with me In fact she insisted to hear the gospel she formally resisted After a few weeks of attendance During an altar call she stood up tall Raising her hands in repentance She opened her heart and gave Christ entrance and right now I'm rejoicing in remembrance. I am I'm I'm sorry I'm just a little emotional but I think it's just beautiful. I really do. I, I, I really really do. And and I'm excited about that. I'm excited. So tell me um I, I always want to know what your live performance is like. If somebody comes to see you in concert, what what's that what is that going to be for them? What is that going to be like for them? Well, um, I'd say I'd say you would experience energy um, because I don't compromise 
performance just because we're trying to preach the word. Yeah, I can um, tell. Because you know, let's, 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 let's be real. Yeah. I, I learned hip hop from the world. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't deny that. I learned hip hop from the world. And in the world, mm-hmm. you know, you have to bring it live. And, and um, yeah. so yeah. when I come into church, it's the same format. It's just that what I'm saying is different. And, and the motive behind what I'm saying is different. The, 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 uh, the, the, the spirit is different. Mm-hmm. And, um, but energy, but also one thing that I don't compromise is I don't compromise ministry for performance either. Amen. Okay, that's so good. That's good. Oftentimes I could be doing a song and if I feel like people aren't hearing what I'm saying, I'd rather tell the DJ to cut the track and I'll do it a cappella. I'd, really? I'd rather someone, yeah, I, I do that very often as a matter of fact. Really? Because, um, every now and then I would just, I would just hear something in my, in, in my heart that says, you know, they're not really hearing what you're saying because sometimes you don't have the best sound engineers at your disposal. Sometimes yeah. maybe the microphone provided on the day aren't the best or, or the acoustic environment isn't the best. So you know that the balance between the, 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 the back and track level and, the, and your microphone level isn't always achieved accurately. So sometimes if I, if I feel like they don't hear what I'm saying, I'll just tell it, uh, the DJ to cut the track and I'll just, I'll just do at least one song a cappella so that, so that someone can leave with the truth in their heart. Or, or, okay, or so, you, so then you get their attention again. And does that become yes. like a, uh, like a spoken word when you're near a cappella or? It, it can it can be in, interpreted as a spoken word. It will still be in rhyme format, so I, I literally literally be rapping, but just without the music. And, mm-hmm. and oftentimes, I would also introduce my songs with scriptures that because see, a lot of my songs are based on teaching. So, for okay. example, like okay. you know, who is that man? Is is oh, a yeah, song yeah. that talks about why I believe Jesus Christ is God. Right. So. When I want to perform a song like that, I would um, refer to scriptures that highlight that um, um, that point I'm trying to make. Okay, or I got I have it. songs like Believe, which is talking about enduring periods of um, hardship before you eventually realize the dreams that God has uh, called you to oh, achieve. Man. So I would refer to scriptures like Have Cup. Yeah, so, so it all, or, or even a song I have called In Christ, In Christ I Trust. I would refer to Jeremiah 17 where it says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. So I, I usually try to, um, draw people's attentions to, to where, to, to what has inspired the song and, and, and the foundation for the song and then, you know, and go from there. So because they might not remember the song, but if they remember the scripture, then that's great. Or we even if they remember the song. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Even if they, yeah, yeah. Even if even if they remember a song, let them also remember a scripture, so that when they sing a song, one day they might just be, you know, sort of uh, encouraged to pick up the Bible and say, right. you know what, that rapper said Jeremiah 17. So right, right, so right. Just look up Jeremiah 17. I mean, even if, even mm-hmm. at the on, on the introduction of uh, Merciful God, you hear me say Matthew 11. Yeah. Oh. Come to me, all you who are worried. <laughs> and I will give you rest. And I actually, I actually made a point to say Matthew 11. Yeah. So that some yeah. kid somewhere might just go, you know, let me just check out this Matthew 11 right. that he's talking about. Right. And right. so that's, that's me, you know. Right. I love that consistency throughout your music. Yeah. yeah. I, I may not get a lyric, I, I may not get the second verse. But as soon as I hear you say the scripture, it's like, oh yeah, he meant that. So let me go, <laughs> uh, let me go check that out. And and I'm I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful. What 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 are some of your struggles as an independent artist? Um, and and we kind of know what they are, but if you tell us, we know how to pray for you and we know how to assist you. So tell me what some of the struggles are and what they continue to be. Right now, it's marketing. Um, I'm, I'm currently in a place where I, I've, I've released the album via my website only for now. Um, because I don't have the budget to pay a prof- professional marketer. And I don't really have the time, um, to, to, to go about it myself as far as being on the internet all day trying. I don't, I don't really have that. Right. Um, right. so. Right now, it's just being sold through my website, and that's typical because it, you know, unless unless you publicize your website every you know every, every morning and night, then it's hard to drive traffic to it. It's hard to 
to get people to, to notice. Okay. Um, there are a couple of avenues we're looking at to kind of, you know, bring the album to light a bit more. But, um, but it's, it's, it's really marketing because like I said, you know, I'm self-produced. You know, okay. I write all my material myself. I recorded myself. I mixed it myself. Got it mastered myself. I did everything technical, everything creative. Uh, it's just when it comes down to marketing it, that's where it's like, uh, you know, so, um, but you know, the Lord doesn't okay. sleep. Okay. Okay. Tell me where you want to go after this project. Because, you, you know, in the secular world, they, they always used to say, you know, you, you, you get a project out and you give it like two or three years before you come out with the next project so that you give yourself a year tour and a year to promote and, uh, you, you know, a year back in the studio or every three or four years. I, I, when I was a teenager, say that Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson were the same person because their projects would never come out the same year. You know, they just kind of, one person would do one thing and, and then somebody else would come out with something different. So, Tell me what you think you'd like to see after this project is promoted and, and uh, tell, tell, tell me what's next. Tell me what's next. Well, we, myself and my wife, we, we have an idea which we we'll think will, you know, will really work. Um, it's going to involve the album. As well as some of her writing. I'd I, I rather not give it away, but but it's okay. what we're planning to do is to present the album in a in a format that's not really um uh, how would I say that's that's not not a norm in the music industry. Okay, I got you. I got you. As far as um is concerned. I, I, I very likely will be doing another album after this. Good. Good. Um, because um, I feel like I'm moving into a different phase of life now. Good. Uh, Good. I'm glad to hear that. I, I will still be um, performing here and there. Good. Um, the Lord has called me into, you know, other lines of work now, and it's the phase, and, and when he's told me that he wants to use me in other areas, different ways, and, and I remember, I remember the, Lord, the, the Lord said to me about this, I've used you to minister the word verbally, uh, on stage, you know, in prisons, different places, use you in ways, you know, that... How would I say? It kind of translates that change in the phase of life. Okay, and, um, I understand. And so, okay. so, so that's so. This is, you know, my last album. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where's your wife? Can you just smack him upside the back of the head? Just smack him upside the back of the That's all right. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> okay, so I understand that men just go through phases and they think they know what they're supposed to do. And when the mighty hand of God comes and tells you, you know, you got 18 more tracks, then please just call me and, and you know, but that's fine. But I, I'll accept. I, I receive that that's what you're telling me right now. <sighs> <laughs> uh, okay, okay. But, but, but like I said, you know, it's um, I I, I will still perform when when called to. Um, I understand. But I understand. Because I, I mean, I'll tell you something. Um, there, there's a difference between doing something because you felt that it was mm. an appropriate thing to do. Right, and right. doing something because God actually told you to go and do it. Right. Now, right. when I started, when I got sick, I started making gospel music because I had so much I wanted to say and share. Yeah. And I felt it was an appropriate thing to do. Yeah. And the Lord supported me and backed me. But some of the things he's telling me to do now is, is haven't even been things that I felt led to do. He's told me to go do it. Yeah. So, so in other words, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in a place now where I'm having to do what the Lord is telling me to do rather than what I feel like I want to do because it comes I, natural to me. I understand. You know, so, and and, and I, I receive that. I, 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 yeah. I really do. Because I in, in 2004, 2003 or 2004, when the Lord commanded me to promote holy hip-hop around the world, and, and we started with the Holy Hip Hop video show, um, 
it, it, the name of it was Real Rap Videos. But at the time, nobody in Christian rap or the hip hop game, nobody had music videos. So I'm like, Lord, how are we going to do a video show with... <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I understand that we have to operate within God's timing, um, but I feel for the next generation of Vision fans that um, may not get another project. I, I because I'm a mom, you know, I'm always looking out for somebody younger. I I I I I, I, I grieve a little bit for them. So, um, but by the time your children are teenagers and you haven't put out a new CD, I I, I think you'll kind of understand (laughs) where, where I'm coming from. Hey there, family. We have reached the end of today's episode of the Hottest Home Hotspot video show. Get a copy of our monthly newsletter by emailing me, Angie B, at gmail.com. Check out the Hottest Home Hotspot worldwide. We are now syndicated on a variety of networks. Check out AngieB.com for showtimes. We want to know who's watching the show, so check us out on MySpace.com slash me, Angie B. Video chat with us live during the show utilizing uvu.com. Follow us on Twitter at hhhotspot. And of course, we're on Facebook. Just search for Angie B. You'll find me. Music videos are provided by the Higher Ground Record Pool. Visit them at highergroundrecordpool.org. The Hottest Home Hotspot video show is produced by Angie B Productions providing Christian entertainment enjoyed by the entire family.